Hey everybody, in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to make this seven inch stick lure. Now it's technically a saltwater lure, but we're testing it out here in the fresh water just to see how it swims. I'm gonna be doing a lot of new techniques that you, you haven't seen before, like uh, resin casting and mold making. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to make it. Okay, so this is the basic layout. As you can see, what I've got here is a stick bait, uh, kind of a glide bait deal, single piece. And uh, the limitations I'm working with is I'm working with a inch and a half tall piece of wood by three quarters of an inch thick piece of wood. What I've got here is a center line drawn and that's where I want my front toe point to be. I'm going to do a through wire for this one. So I'm probably going to do the same kind of classic design that I've done before where I run this way, loop down, back up, and then back out again. Top profile wise, you can see I'm going to have a pretty broad head. Uh, being a tarpon, it's got that sloped chin and I'm going to make that a pretty large flat surface along there and I'm going to make it pretty broad um, from the front end. And then of course the tail will taper down.
So what I've done here is I've taken my uh, original drawing here and I've transferred it onto a piece of tracing paper. And the game plan is to use that to transfer my pattern onto the wood. Using my quarter inch Forstner. I broke off a little thin piece in there. So I kind of shoved it back into place with my knife. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little dot of glue in there. All right, so this next bit we need to do is to carve the scales on both sides of the fish. Now I've already done this one side that I'll show you. And I'll show you how I did that on the other side. All right, the very first thing we need to do is get our center line marked. I'm gonna erase this lateral line for right now because it just kind of adds confusion. We need to go up a quarter of an inch. Okay. I'm going to come out an eighth of an inch from my gill plate and make a mark. And I need to come up straight at a 90 degree angle and put that same mark on the line above, okay? And then I'm going to do eighth inch marks in all directions. Once we've got those marked, I'm going to draw my diagonals.
So as you can see, what you should wind up with are these diamond shapes. All right, now I've cut them all this way, cut all of these marks. I'm gonna score all of these marks as well. Now that I've got my scoring in both directions, uh, I'm going to start making my first cuts. So I'm going to go halfway and then do it at a 45 back to the cut. Right, does that make sense? So what we're going to do is we're going to do that same little 45 degree cut at each one of those hashes and that's in that same direction all the way down the length of it I finished that one cut let's see if I can get a good angle for you to see what we've got going on there all right and so now we're going to do the exact same thing for the other angle. We're going to cut halfway up to the line. Okay, now that I've made both of those cuts, I've got a basic scale pattern here, uh, but what we need to do now is start shaping them uh, into scales for a uh, fish. And so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my Dremel and I've got this uh, flat diamond bit on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten that center ridge on each one and try and get all these scales flattened out a little bit. You can kind of see right now they've got a, if you look at that one, you can see that there's a ridge down the middle. And what I want to do is I want to flatten that out. Okay, now that I've got that done, I'm going to take some 180 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to kind of sand it a bit flat. The next, the next thing we need to do is we need to round each one of these scales. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to knock these points off. At the end of the day, what we want to get is this rounded look on each one. I've got my uh, wood burner and I've got this tip on there. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of smoothing up each scale. Uh, so I go right up into that point there, the deepest part of the scale, and I'm kind of burning down into that at an angle and keeping it smooth. So what you want, what you wind up with is a nice smooth scale that, that slopes uh, out. It's a little bit difficult to tell uh, on camera, but I think that's given me a pretty nice smooth scale pattern. And what I'll say is I don't think that this wood burner is a, a necessity 
to be able to make scales. I think there's plenty of plenty of people that have carved scales without using it. Uh, it's just another tool that I think helps out, um, makes it a little bit easier. Um, instead of trying to sand all that out, I can just burn it away, which is a little bit easier in my opinion. Now that we've essentially got our carving finished, we need to start thinking about hardware. My game plan on this is to make a mold and cast uh, these lures out of resin. So um, what I need to do is show some hardware locations on this so that when I make my mold, I'll have a place that I can snap my through wire into before I do my pour. Uh, so I don't really need to do the through wire, go through that whole process for the master. Uh, but I, what I do need to do is show a little loop of wire at each of these locations. So I've marked where those are going to be on the tail and in the belly and in the uh, chin. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut three pieces of this. 0.062 stainless steel lock wire, which is uh, the wire I'm going to be using for my harness. About like that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those short and then I'm just going to screw, I'm, I'm not going to screw, I'm going to drill in there and just stick it in like so, uh, just as a placeholder. Let's do that right there. Okay, and so if I want it centered, you know what, I'm going to let that one be just a, a little bit lower. So we're going to do one hole there, and I've got a small bit put into my drill. I Let's just tack those into place with some super glue. All right, for this uh, master, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this uh, polyurethane on there and I'm going to hang it to let it uh, drip and dry. And I want to hang it like so. Uh, so that none of this polyurethane gets caught up in the in the scale pattern or up in the gills I want it to flow off and be nice and clean when I'm done Now that I've got my box made, I'm gonna put a piece of foil under it just to keep things clean. And then uh, for the clay, I, I've just got some of this uh, non-hardening modeling clay.
I think that's pretty reasonable. Now let's take our lure. I'm not going to be able to press it in there fully like I need to, but I can get it in there well enough to draw out the outline. And then I need to scoop out. Let me go get a spoon. By the way, I have never done this before at all. So do not look to me for uh, quality instruction on this. I did some research and did some looking online, figured out how other people were doing it. But I've never done it personally. And uh, There's a lot of people doing different methods. Some people use uh, the Legos to make their box. Or Lego, sorry. I've been informed that there's no such thing as Legos. It's just Lego. But anyway, I just felt like it would be uh, just as fast and easy to make a old box. Alrighty. Getting there. I've got a set of these tools, which I think are actually clay sculpting tools which I'm going to use to get a nice crisp edge all the way around to put in a few of these little keys and these will help the whole thing line up when both sides are done I don't know why I'm telling you all this y'all probably know more about this than I do Okay, the uh, silicone that I've got is this Let's Resin silicone rubber. I don't know, I've got it off Amazon. We'll give it a try. Um, seems pretty straightforward. You just mix equal parts A and B. Let's do 150, we'll do half. All right, so, it's like anything else, it says to mix for five minutes. I've just about got this fully mixed, I think. There's lots of bubbles in it. Now what I was seeing online is that some people have a vacuum chamber which will uh, basically take all the bubbles out. Um, I was not really ready to invest in that just yet because I don't know if I'm going to like this or not. So. Um, I've got another t technique I saw. I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to put some mold release on there. I just feel like it needs it. Can't 
Can't hurt, right? I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, that's what I used. Again, Amazon. Fast drying. I don't know, we'll give it a shot. Sure can't hurt. I hope. Okay. Now that this is all mixed, I'm going to pour a really thin layer over the lure body. Just enough to cover it. And I'm gonna let those bubbles rise through and pop for about, uh, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. And then I'll come back and I'll pour the rest. get it to come out in a big piece. There we go. Sweet. As a additional precaution, I'm going to brush some of this uh, petroleum jelly on the uh, silicone parts, not on the lure, uh, because I've read a lot about silicone wants to stick to silicone really bad. All right, now let's mix up the last of our silicone let it uh, let's let it sit for about five minutes let the bubbles all pop truth. There we go. Looks pretty good. All right, now what I want to do is cut my pour hole. We should also put a little air vent at the front and the back, maybe right here.
All right, I've got my wire about as good as I'm going to get it for now. And you can see that it lines up pretty well with our master. I'm letting it ride a little bit high in there because I need room to put weight in the belly. So um, what we're going to do is we'll take our mold apart. Okay, and then we're going to set our wire in those loops as best we can. It's not perfect, but they will go. I will say now, ordinarily, I would go on ahead and have my weight probably, I'm thinking I'm going to attach it uh, to these shafts on the bottom some way, uh, either glue it or, or whatever, so that it'll be cast into the lure. Uh, but since I don't know exactly what weight I'm going to need, I'm just going to cast one for now with nothing in it, and I'll add the, I'll add the lead like I normally do. Um, but I'll make note of how much weight I've got and in what locations. So for future molds, um, it'll already be attached to this. Uh, that way I don't have to do all the drilling and all the extra steps. So I'm going to set my wire in there. And then I'm going to put my other half on carefully. Okay. okay, I need to get myself a better idea of what kind of volume this lure is. And so to do that, since it's already sealed, I filled a cup pretty much full of water and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dunk it in there all the way let it overflow and actually it doesn't overflow but you see how it bubbles all the way up to the top okay got my scale zeroed out I've got another deal of water and another little cup and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this little guy one fluid ounce. It's one scoop. Another fluid ounce. Okay, that's basically two. So that wound up being 61 grams or two fluid ounces. Okay, so the resin I'm gonna be using is this um, amazing casting resin. It's made by Illumina, Illumilite. Uh, it will cure white. And um, it really has a pretty short um, working time because it's gonna be fully set up and cured in 15 minutes or so the instructions say. So before I start mixing any of that I want to go ahead and get my micro balloons um, or my microspheres whatever you want to call it I want to get those uh, measured out first so that I'm not wasting precious time uh, uh, these are also by Illumilite um, I've done a quick calculation and it basically two fluid ounces is what we need for this lure um, but I'm going to add a little bit over that. I'd rather have too much mixed up and, and have a little bit extra than to be too short. You know? Time is my enemy on this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my microspheres in the part A and stir it in so that I'm not doing that later on. That'll just save me a little bit more time because once I put B in, it's going to be a race. Once I add part B, I have 30 seconds to mix and another minute and a half to pour. So 
I've got myself a little timer here, you may hear it. It's a 30 second timer and it'll repeat itself so I know I know what time I've got. I should have made my little hole bigger. Man, that time goes. Only got 30 more seconds. I don't know guys, that one may not pan out. I need to be able to pour it in there faster. But we'll just wait and see. Alrighty. Yep. Yeah, that's all I got in there before it set up. <laughs> oh boy. But on the plus side, you can see my pattern and my detail came through really well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna salvage my wire here. And then I'm going to increase the size of my funnel. So this is a learning experience for me. Um, like I said, don't be using this as a guide on a how-to because I don't know what I'm doing, but um, if you want to learn along with me, then of course you're welcome to. But I'm, I'm excited about this. I, I really like what I'm seeing of, of the part that worked. We just need to kind of fine-tune our, our, uh, our funnel here and, and get it in there faster, like a lot faster. As you can see, I've greatly increased the size of my uh, pour hole. And then I did double check my sprues by kind of blowing on it and making sure the air is coming out of those when I blow into it. Um, the other thing I can do to learn as much as I can from my failure is I've got a piece of this and we'll just see how that uh, that mixture worked out buoyancy wise. That's pretty pretty buoyant. It could probably stand to be a little bit less buoyant actually. So I may back off of my uh, microsphere mixture just a little bit. Because if you have too much, if you have too much buoyancy, that just means you're going to have to put a lot more weight in there. So um, what I want to do is kind of back off of that a little bit so that uh, I'm not having to add quite so much lead. Attempt number two. That time is no joke. So I've got part A. I'm going to go ahead and mix in my microspheres. And then I went on ahead and measured out the right amount of um, part B. I think I lost too much time, you know, 
slowly pouring and watching the number come up and up and up and up until I got the right amount. I don't think I have time for that. What I need to do is have both parts ready to go. Okay, let's get our timer set. This is like a race. Okay, here we go. No messing around. And go. see how we did here huh. I don't know what that is that's troubling closer we're definitely getting closer but you can see here in the belly it's not all set up right something something happened I don't know if I just maybe didn't get it mixed well at the bottom or what but what I think that looks like that looks like part of the mixture so what I'm thinking is that at the bottom of the cup all of part B did not get mixed in well somehow I mean I stirred but I think it it went straight to the bottom and it stayed there and so it didn't mix well and it was able to activate most of it but then when I poured it it all settled in the bottom and drained out the bottom and didn't set up right so I think that's what happened here I'm set up for Try number three. One thing I did learn from the last pour is that my amount is correct. So uh, the method I used to calculate that volume worked pretty well. And then my, my margin of error was the addition of the macrospheres adds a little bit more volume to it. So it, it makes sure that I have plenty in there. I cut the bottom off of my um, stir stick here so that I can really get to the bottom and, and make sure I'm thoroughly mixed. Here we go. Trying to get really down in the bottom there. Make sure that I'm thoroughly, thoroughly mixed. I'm actually even holding it at a angle here. Okay. I know. In you go. Nice. All right, I think we got us a winner. So let's just see what we're starting with here before we uh, try to add some weight. Okay, it kind of wants to lay on its side. Pretty buoyant.
All right, the great thing about the uh, hot glue method is I was able to kind of go back and forth a few times and I found just the right balance for what I'm wanting. Okay, so that's a very slow sink. Uh, but I feel like by the time that I get uh, the clear coat and all the other stuff on it, it'll sink just a, a tad bit faster. But uh, I think that'll be a good, a good bait. I can fish that one kind of near the surface if I want, or I can let it sink a little if I want. Gives it a little bit of versatility. I've marked on my stencil here the locations of my weights. I'm going to weigh them. This rear weight, ooh, let's just say eight grams. Ten. 10.25, I think we can just say 10 grams. There we go. I just get a block of wood and I drill uh, a few of these holes uh, at different depths uh, into my wood and then I just pour some lead in it and then I can knock those out pretty easily and uh, once I do that then I can come up with a few of these little pellets to work with so if you wanted to do a custom balance um, I would go that route and then you could drill drill and just slide in each one you don't even have to pour the hot lead in there you can weigh it ahead of time, put it in, and then we'll super glue in baking soda and it'll be uh, completely sealed up and ready to go. So this will just kind of help control where that glue goes. I do have a few little bubbles here along the top that I want to fill and I'm just going to use some drywall spackle for that. Um, this stuff really doesn't need to get wet uh, or it'll dissolve up, but I'm not relying on it in a structural way for this lure and once it gets all covered with the epoxy clear coat then it'll be well waterproofed. So just for cosmetic reasons I'm going to I'm going to fill those and then once that dries I'll sand it smooth and that'll give me a nice smooth uh, top on my lure. Alrighty, let's foil this bad boy. All right, now this is, this is kind of important. When you're making two sides for foil, you wanna flip it over like that.
Okay, finally got done with embossing all the scales, uh, which took quite a while doing both sides. I'll try and give you a close look. I think they turned out pretty nice. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a clear coat over it so that I can smooth the top uh, and the bottom where I've got a seam. I'll just put a thin clear coat over the whole thing and then uh, that will get me set up to paint paint the top and the bottom a little bit. I think I'm going to leave the, the sides pretty much uh, as is and try to get it as close to a tarpon as I can. Let's start off with opaque white. Anybody want to guess what we're going to put on the belly? Cast your vote now. Pearl white. <laughs> I know that's a big surprise for everybody. We're going to use this uh, plastic mesh again I uh, used on my last lure. This is uh, just a plastic mesh that I got off of a bag of oranges. Um, I'm always on the lookout for a good mesh to use and the reason I like this one is it's a large, it's a large mesh which will match the fish that I'm doing here. Okay, I'm going to start with a base color of iridescent turquoise. Well, I don't think I clicked record on that. Um, I took a transparent light brown and I painted a stripe down the middle of the back. See, now I've got that pattern there, but I feel like that pattern's probably just a little bit too bold. So we're gonna mute that just a little bit. We're gonna come back over that again with the brown. Take the fin and I want to do a dot right here. And now we're gonna come back and we're gonna we're gonna cover some of that with a pearl satin gold. And what that'll do is that'll make this a little bit more of a bronze bronze look. So we're going to cover that and then we're going to extend just a hair beyond it. Okay. time with iridescent turquoise. Just to bring it back, back to blue, just a hair more. Transparent black. I'm using these uh, these eyes right here, frost, six millimeter. Oh, 
All right, and then these decals are water slide decals that I've printed myself. I'll try and get them linked down in the description below if I can find them. Once you've printed them and you've sprayed the uh, clear coat over it, then you just put it in the water for a few seconds. It's exactly like, uh, yeah, it's the same decals that they use on the small plastic models, like the model cars and planes and stuff. That's probably long enough, just, just enough to get it wet, flip it. And then what you can do is you can slide the decal off onto your lure. Like so. And get it positioned like you want it. And then I use a, a clean, uh, dry Q-tip and I roll the water out. I like to uh, sign and date all of mine. Nice. So it does sink a little bit faster, you can see. But the orientation is still good. If you like the content I'm putting out, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and give me a thumbs up so I can make more of the stuff you want to see. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I welcome your feedback and appreciate all of your support. Thanks again everyone for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.